come in to share her story and her name is Bakani. I hope I said that correctly and she's an influential abstract painter and computational artist, social entrepreneur and climate campaigner. Wow, it's a lot to put into <laughs> a day in a lifetime. So Bakani is going to share with us how she does all of that. She's a leading female African artist breaking new ground in abstract I'm sorry, I'm just reading in abstract painting and using state of the art virtual and augmented reality technology to create impactful installations. She is internationally exhibited and her street art creatively brings complex, interconnected, environmental, and social issues to the wider public. So, wow, I'm excited already. So, Bakani, if you can just come and tell us all about what you're doing, how you're doing it, and whatever advice you've got for everyone. Sure. Thank you so much. Thank you for having me. Um, I've been inspired listening to the other artists. I've actually got my little notebook. Um, I've been taking some notes as well. Um, so I guess it might be helpful if I just give a quick overview of my career and um, how I've got into the various uh, work that I'm making now um, and then maybe some takeaways as well. Okay, so uh, I'm originally from Zimbabwe, and I actually think I know um, Fungai, who was mentioned earlier. Um, we've met in the small London art circles, especially amongst African artists. There are very few of us around, so we get to know each other. Um, and we moved to the UK when I was, when I was about 13. Um, I went to school, then university. I studied politics with economics at the University of Bath. I guess I wasn't a very creative child. It wasn't very, you know, sadly we didn't have trips to the galleries or museums uh, growing up. Um, and it was only really when I won uh, an internship um, at uh, an investment bank, JP Morgan, um, in my year out. So my university was great in that we did two years at university, one year out in industry to get experience and then back to the final year. So um, I wanted to work in the foreign office, but didn't get in. So I ended up in investment banking and I was very unhappy. Um, I was good at my job. I worked hard, had my penthouse little flat and flew to Rome because I'd had a tough week. And, you know, I know how privileged it sounds to still have all these things that you think like this is why my parents worked so hard for me to get to the UK and for us to have opportunities. And what I really realized was that those were, yes, it was a well-paid job, but I wasn't fulfilling my potential. And that will come back knocking at you um, and it will haunt you and either be the thing that sort of, you know, you're just looking forward to the weekend and that's, you've got bills to pay and that's that. Um, but I took that year back at university to really figure out what it is that I wanted to do. Um, and the thing is the bank had spotted something in me which I wasn't spotting in myself, which was, you know, I work hard, I'm smart, I, I'm a problem solver, I'm an entrepreneur. And they were very willing to pay a lot of money to get that to fulfill their dreams. And whereas, like, I wasn't doing that for myself and I wasn't backing myself. So after I'm adopted by my aunt, and after I left the bank and turned down a graduate job, and she's a nurse, you know, I was earning more than she was at 20, turned down that job. And she's, and she rightly questioned, you know, what on earth are you thinking to be turning this down? It's guaranteed money. You know, we're not a rich family, so it's not like I could, you know, just be at home chilling. Um, and I said I wanted to start my own company. And she was just like, well, you're going to have to work alongside that. So um, I worked part time for a while until our company got off the ground and it was a sustainability consultancy. So one of the things that I've been very aware of is that I've been very lucky. I, like I say, I grew up in Zimbabwe. We moved here when I was a teenager. So I'm not unaware. And we moved to Buckinghamshire, but we were in a council estate. So I wasn't like unaware of how lucky I was to have all the opportunities that I had. And for me, that's always meant I have a responsibility to do something with this life that I've been given and to make that, you know, um, impact as, as a really core cool part of whatever I was going to be doing in my life. I was always going to be talking about issues that I care about, um, specifically social justice and environmental, and there's a very clear link 
in my mind between those two. And I was going to be doing it in a way that I felt was strategic. So, um, yeah, we started this consultancy. It then turned into a software company. We had a team working in the Philippines to maintain our software because it was more expensive um, to do it here. Um, and we built the team with a, a company in Manchester. I, my business partner and I were not coders, but we built our brand. Um, and in terms of how we built our brand, um, I really want to share this book with you. Um, this guy, oh, sorry, that is an exceptionally long link. Anyway, the book is called Key uh, Person of Influence. And the guy who wrote it was actually one of our first business mentors. And he was incredibly helpful. Um, but basically, it helped us to establish our um, our selves in our field, really pick something, really be specific about what you want to be known for. and go out and, and really build a six figure business out of that. Um, but I did leave that business um, because again, I still wasn't feeling like I was fulfilling what I was meant to be doing. And I really wanted something that was of my own um, and that I could uh, be independent and, but I could also scale that business. So um, I think it was 2017, um, I'd gone on a pilgrimage. Um, so we walked across Spain in the height of summer um, and you know over that hundred kilometers that we did in that 10 days you know I was really thinking about what is it that I'm meant to be doing I've been painting for about eight years at this point I'd had my first show in London because a friend had been, had been really encouraging me to say you know show your stuff like you, you keep underestimating it and one of the things that I come from I'm a very competitive person <laughs> uh, I'm also very ambitious and my family is like, yeah, we want to support you, but we're not just going to like support you like in something that we don't know. We don't get this arts thing that you're doing. We don't, sorry, just had some post. Um, we don't understand like you're just throwing colors at a, at a thing and it's just abstract. I could do that. A five-year-old could do that. And so really explaining why this was important and why specifically abstract art is important was as you can imagine a fun conversation with an african auntie who's just like i have no time for this nonsense when she came to my first show i sold a tiny little piece like this for like a few hundred pounds and she was just like i don't on, you need to give them back their money. This is not honest. <laughs> I was like, no, I've worked really hard on this. I've worked hard on this whole show. What that person is paying for isn't just that painting. They're paying for all the research that I put in behind it, all the pre-paintings that you don't see because this one made it out of the studio, all of that work, you know, and they're supporting me as an artist. So obviously I kept the money. <laughs> and, and, you know, um, but I wanted to prove to myself that it wasn't just my friends and my family that thought what I was doing was good. So I entered this BBC competition, although another friend had to tell me about it. Uh, BBC was looking for amateur painters for this uh, TV series called The Big Painting Challenge. And I wanted to prove that um, I'd read this book, you know, so good they can't ignore you. Um, and I wanted to prove that in a completely blank canvas, pun intended, um, you know, where people don't know who I am, they don't know my personality, they don't know my history, um, and all they see are the paintings, do they really stand out? Like, am I actually as good as I think I am? And some of my family and friends think I am. Um, and does that work stand out? So the, I applied to the London one, because that's where I live, uh, London round of, it, of auditions. And I figured, look, if I get there and I'm, I don't draw, I'm not a figurative person. And this painting show was obviously going to be about like doing portraits, landscapes. And I was like, I've no, like, this isn't even an area of art that I think is that interesting. Um, but I might learn something and I might get mentoring, which I hadn't had professionally at that point. Like I said, I studied politics. Anyway, so I got through about like, there were over a thousand people that applied in London over 200 that auditioned. And to me, the fact that I got through those showed that my work could speak and stand for itself. Like when I go to the Tate, I see people who have similar work styles, you know, and I go to shows in Mayfair and Chelsea and Soho and works are going for hundreds of thousands. And I wanted to understand 
like why does that go for that price and why aren't i seeing enough black artists going for that price and also do i have the potential to do that same thing and so i realized that a lot of those people had also gone to do masters so i um applied to the six top schools didn't get into any of them and then I actually got a call back to say, look, you applied for traditional painting and sculpture, but what we think you would be good at is this computational stuff. You had this tech business, but actually you could be designing video artworks that go into video games, which is the biggest um, cultural moment of our time. Um, so work in virtual reality or, you know, artwork that is on your mobile phone, like something that everybody has with them all the time. So I knew I would need a way to have my art and passion speak to the issues that I think are important and we don't see about. So things like parity, pay parity for black workers, um, the way that pollution affects, you know, black communities, especially in the cities, but also globally. And, and I didn't want to have to censor myself. So, um, I was like, okay, cool, let me start this uh, computational art. So using code, so I was basically being taught how to code as well as applying that to art. And that's where I am now. I also now have a studio in London Fields. And I also wanted to have um, the other thing kind of takeaway, I guess. Um, I really wanted to see a little bit like Bertha mentioned that you have to see how your business can grow and can scale. So having already had a startup that did well, for me to like this is my career now for the rest of my life i'm still working part-time to sup supplement it what i learned from my first business is there's no such thing as overnight success even when you know my own family we were arguing about you know what are you trying to achieve i knew i was building something and i knew i was onto something and i have that same instinct about my artwork but it took two or three years where we weren't seeing enough money to live on of me really dedicating that work and that time and using that book and the suggestions in there to really start to build a brand. And I know that's what I have to do now. Um, and so I'm using um, a site called Redbubble that can scale my work. So I don't have to manage all the production. I don't have to manage all like the, um, uh, you know, all the logistics basically of scaling up my business but the more my brand grows the more i can scale this up and just get earnings from royalties off the back of my own stuff and that to me is really important yes you give away um so they take all the margins for the production and the delivery and postage etc but actually i can choose how high i want my margins and i can decide that for myself so there are certain things that I was like, I want a business that's going to be global and I wanted to support my work so I can talk about issues that maybe a gallery might not want me to talk about. Maybe investors might not want me to talk about in a startup context, you know, which I found in my previous business that you have to toe a certain line and you can't go and be speaking out about the things that you believe in necessarily because they criticize some of the you know, people that might be interested, that might have interests in your business. So for me, artwork is about that freedom, but it's also like, I hate this, I, oh, poor artists, like starving artists. No, there are ways in which artists can earn money. Um, and we just, we need to be teaching each other those uh, things. So to that end, I've recently been part of a founder group of, we created this little WhatsApp group where we share when there's funding going, when there's, you know, exhibition opportunities, when there's residency opportunities. And I'm actually, yeah, I'm going to share that with the group. Uh, I'm going to share that in the chat now. Um, so if you know other artists um, and you want to help them to succeed, help them uh, to support them, please add them to this uh, WhatsApp. We're going to start doing events on Zoom, etc. as well. And it's artists all over the world. So we've got people from Kenya, Nigeria, Zambia, you know, and it's really exciting because like when I'm going around exhibitions in London, I'm not meeting these people. We're not exchanging these ideas. We're out here acting as if there's scarcity and there's not, but there are ways in which we can improve ourselves and improve each other and um, go ahead from there. So I also want to share a book that in my banking days um, was absolutely amazing. This woman was one of the first black women in Wall Street and an incredible book. Um, and I think um, 
it was Antonella who said about um, you have to like sorry I actually it was Bertha who said like you have to go out expecting to win and I was just like yes that's what this book is exactly about and she basically says look go out be prepared and be professional and she even gives like how to have promotions conversations and um, yeah I think I'm about to be uh, told to stop by Eve yes, so um, what is that to me, okay. <laughs> uh, as you can tell I can talk for England um, <laughs> so I guess my the last few things to say is please buy art from living artists the dead ones don't need the money um, so <laughs> my <laughs> my website will be shared with you shortly um, please support other artists like we do so much better by collaboration and um, the things that i'm looking for last year i put it out into the universe that i wanted one of my paintings to be on an album cover that's now coming up next year so i'm going to keep putting things out into the universe um and one of them is i'm really keen to like scale get bigger so if you have any advice for people who know how i can like keep growing my instagram for example um and keep growing my website all these things i'm really open to advice and really open to feedback um, and I'm also open to giving back. So I do uh, workshops um, for free. The workshops that I do do for free are for uh, community projects. So hit me up, collaborate on those. Refugee kids, especially adopted kids, foster care kids. That's all you know, my background. So I really want to support uh, all those. So if you ever have events and workshops and things that you need for that kind of thing, let me know. And generally, if you have any questions, please drop me a note on Instagram or um my emails on my website as well thank you so much thank you bakani um could you pronounce your surname for us please yeah so uh funny story whenever i used to go interviewing in the city they expected a young japanese man um, <laughs> it's bakani chitsu chitsu exactly okay. i like to get it right you see with <laughs> i appreciate it i, I have an unusual first name which i'm not going to tell you at that moment okay. but eve, eve will do <laughs> yeah, I, mean, for my art, I just use my first name because yeah i'm, I'm hoping it'll be like madonna get... there's not that many Vokanis out there in yeah. the world so <laughs> Vokani, got that right so it's yeah. good that people get your name right it's not very important appreciate i think it. and I'll... thank you very much for sharing um Appreciate so it. again with such energy and um you know telling us your journey and where you are now and i love that i hope i was going to go away with that phrase now yeah if i can live in artists because the next ones don't need the money <laughs> love that that's going to go viral now <laughs> but um one thing i picked up from what you said and i think um again it's about what this conference is about it's, you said there are ways in which artists can earn money we need to be teaching each other these things and that just really it that's the finger on the button that is and that's what this event is all about and that's what networking is about and people might say my network is small but the fact is is it active is it powerful and are you actually sharing and that's what networking is all about and you really showed that today and so and also you know in terms of introduction i can see now how you fit all of that into what you do because you do meld everything together and i think that's amazing so um, i think i speak on behalf of us all that was quite amazed by what you're doing so you know more power to you and keep doing what you're doing and keep sharing so thank you thank you for sharing today okay so Warning, warning, warning.